Hello friends, it is so good to be here today and to bring you this new yoga practice. Yoga during quarantine, yoga during the coronavirus, yoga in the midst of this crazy unique season. So if you're watching this now and you are still under stay at home orders, if you have lost your job or lost a loved one, if you're feeling the overwhelming uncertainty and anxiety of this season, then this video is specifically for you. And if you're watching this much later and we're not in the middle of a global pandemic, it will still resonate, I am sure of it. Um, what we're gonna do in today's practice is what's called a, a yang and a yin practice. Yang means sun, it's heat building. We're gonna flow through some movements with nice strong breath. It's not gonna be really power flowy, um, but we're gonna get especially into the muscles that may be sore from sitting around all day. And then the second half of the practice is gonna be a more deep stretching, restorative, slow practice, and we'll use some props for it. So you'll wanna have a blanket and two pillows the bigger and thicker and bulkier, the better. You don't want saggy ones because we're gonna use them for support. So grab what you have at home, it's gonna be great. And, um, and we'll use that for the second half of the practice. Now, before we begin, I just wanna speak a little bit to what, um, what the Lord's been guiding me through in this season. Um, right before the coronavirus kind of hit in the United States, I started reading this book by John Mark Comer called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. And um, if you live in the Western world today, you should read this book. <laughs> it is deeply convicting about how hurry and speed and rushing has become um, just this predominant culture and way of living and how, how dangerous it is, not just for our own personal health, but our relationships and primarily our relationship with God. And he starts by quoting sort of the inspiration behind this book. And the title is this quote by Dallas Willard, who said this, that hurry is the great enemy of spiritual life in our day. You must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. And so that's what we're sort of going to examine in today's practice. We'll look back on what our life was like before this very unique season ask the Lord to speak to it, and then sort of cast vision for, for what life can look like as a result of this slowing down, staying at home, and, and more open schedules. So with that being said, we're going to begin standing at the top of our mat. You can slide your props off to the side, and let's jump in and do some yoga. Let's begin our practice standing at the front of our mats. Bring your feet underneath your hips. And bring your hands either at your heart or if you're feeling really ungrounded today and um, having trouble connecting with your breath, then you can put one hand over your heart, one hand over your belly. And just take a moment here, maybe sway side to side, forward and back, kind of find where you are in space today, how it feels to be in your body and how balanced or grounded or present you feel. And then slow your swaying down, see if you can balance yourself over the center line of your body. Feel your feet root into the floor, the crown of your head reach up to the ceiling. And if you feel comfortable doing so, close your eyes and draw your awareness to your breath. Now this first part of our practice is going to be quite fluid and flowy and heat building and strength building. And so this connection to our breath is so important. We're going to practice what's called ujjayi breath, which means victorious breath. And it sounds like the waves of the ocean. So you'll inhale through your nose like we normally do. And then exhale at your mouth right now like you were trying to fog up a mirror. <sighs> Feel how the back of your throat kind of constricts. Inhale again through your nose. Breathe out the same way, but just close your lips. So you'll still make that <sighs> sound like you would if you were fogging up a mirror. And that's, that's our victorious breath, our oceanic breath. And it helps anchor us in our bodies, helps give our thoughts something to hold on to, the sound of our breath in and out. And we're going to see how long we can make our inhales and exhales here. Before we begin to flow, I want to anchor our practice in scripture. 
So the scripture we'll be drawing from today is Psalm 55. It's this this psalm written by David as he's running from Saul, from this uh, and now an enemy of his, used to be a friend, now an enemy who's seeking to kill him. And many of the Psalms are David crying out to God in the midst of this turmoil. And as I was reading this the other day, it just so resonated with me in this season, right? We may not be being chased by uh, an evil king, but we are under threat from a virus that is deadly. Many of us have lost jobs or livelihoods. Perhaps we've lost loved ones. And there's a sense of fear and ever-present threat. And that is that is a main theme of the book of Psalms. And so I'm going to read to you for the first few verses to begin our practice, and then we'll revisit it at the end. But David writes this, God, listen to my prayer. Don't hide your heart from me when I cry out to you. Come close to me and give me your answer. Here I am, moaning and restless. I'm preoccupied with the threats of my enemies and crushed by the pressure of their opposition. They surround me with trouble and terror. In their fury, they rise up against me in an angry uproar. My heart is trembling inside my chest as the terror of death seizes me. Fear and dread overwhelm me. I shudder before the horror I face. I say to myself, if only I could fly away from all of this. I'm going to pause here. Eugene Peterson reflects on this verse and he says, maybe this is why God didn't give us wings. This longing in us to just say, if only I could fly away from all of this. Maybe that's why God didn't give us wings. Friend, what if God has something for us in this season? in the midst of our fear and dread and overwhelm? What about God's goodness? What about heaven's characteristics does God long for us to reclaim, to know, not just in our heads, but to really saturate in our bodies and in our spirits in this season? So as we flow through this part of our practice, we're going to do it slowly and deliberately. If you need to pause this practice to catch your breath and to reconnect, do that. That's more important than checking off a box of getting through this video. All right, we're not in a rush. We're not trying to perform something. We're here to be with God. So let's work that out through a flow in this first part of this practice and then slow it way down for some good deep stretching at the end. So take a really big breath in. Now reach your arms over your head. Open your chest. Maybe even look up and see your hands. And then bring your hands into a prayer position. Trace a line through the center of your body as you fold over your legs. And we're just going to go up and down like this a couple of times. As you do, can you bend your knees and begin to use your legs? So this isn't just um, you kind of lifting up and down from your chest, but you're beginning to use the whole strength of your body and maintain that ujjayi breath. So hear your breath as you do this. With bent knees and a flat spine, inhale and stand all the way up, arms overhead. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, bend your knees, stand up really tall, and then exhale with a long flat spine, folds forwards. Good, bend your knees, inhale, stand all the way up, sweep your arms over your head. Exhale, hands to your heart. One more time with bent knees, shoot yourself even taller, arms lift up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way back up. Exhale, hands together at your heart. Good. Keep your hands in prayer, but interlace all your fingers except for your index fingers. Reach your arms back over your head and then take a little bend over to the left side. You can kind of pull on your right hand a bit to help deepen the stretch. Heavy the outer edge of your right foot. If you even want to bend your left knee, you can here. Breath is full and steady. And then on your next exhale, come back up to the center, arms lift overhead. And on your next exhale, you'll bend over to the right side. Good. After your exhale, rise back up to the center, release your fingers, fold yourself back in half. 
On your inhale, now lift just halfway up. You can rest your hands on your shins, your thighs. Maybe they reach the floor. The important thing is that your tailbone lengthens back as the crown of your head reaches forward. Your shoulders wrap down your spine. We're holding this a bit longer than normal, so stay here. Draw out your exhale and feel your core muscles, the middle of your torso, hug in and hold you stable. Good. After your next exhale, release yourself back down over your thighs. Fingertips find the floor now and step your left foot back. Lower your left knee down onto the mat. And as you inhale, sweep your arms over your head so that you're in this supported low lunge. As you exhale, your fingertips will find the floor again. You'll start to straighten out your right leg and reach your right hip back. Your right leg does not have to be straight here. We're going to flow forward and back like this. So if keeping it bent helps you do that, then keep it bent. On your inhale, rise back up, arms overhead. With intentionality and purpose, exhale, sit it back. Good. Follow your breath. Inhale all the way back up. Exhale, sit it back. Good, this time we're gonna do it slightly differently. Inhale, rise up into the supported lunge. This time as you exhale, put your hands down inside your right foot. You'll tuck your back toes, lift your back knee off the mat and pivot over to the long edge of your mat. So your right leg's gonna be straight, left knee's gonna be bent, right toes can reach up to the ceiling and just stay on your fingertips. We wanna keep your left heel rooted on the floor. This isn't about you know, super flexibility right now. This is about finding a nice stretch on the inside of your right leg. So if you find that at a higher vantage point, great. Good. And then let's flow in and out of this a couple of times. So as you inhale, come back to a supported lunge. Keep your back knee lifted, but fingertips on the floor, chest lifts up. And then as you exhale, open it out to the side. Flex your right foot up to the ceiling, bend into your left knee. Good, inhale back forward and center. Exhale, take it open to the side. Good, this time let's just make it a wide-legged forward fold. So straighten both legs, point your feet to the long edge of your mat and just hang here for a moment. Maybe you sway side to side, maybe you sway forward and back. Let your head get heavy and drop. The first definition of love that Paul gives us in 1 Corinthians 13 is that love is patient. Friend, God is not in a rush. So why do we try and rush things with him? Why is that so often the defining quality of our lives, this feeling of being rushed? What is it that God wants to reveal and break in us in this season of slow, of being stuck at home. All right, let's walk ourselves back forward. Your hands are going to frame your right foot, and then just step your left foot forward so you're in a forward fold. Bend your knees, root down, rise all the way up. Nice, big, long mountain pose, arms overhead, and then exhale, hands to your heart. Again, soft bend in your knees, big breath in, arms overhead and exhale, fold yourself back in half. Let's do this on the other side. So step your, actually let's lift halfway up first. So hands slide onto your shins, lengthen your spine. As you exhale, hug your belly in towards your spine. Good, and then lower your hands down to the mat. Step your right foot back. Now lower your right knee down. On your inhale, sweep your arms over your head. As you exhale, hands frame your foot, sit your hips back, flexing your left foot. Good. Inhale brings you forward and up. Exhale sits you back. Once more like this. Inhale forward and up. And exhale, drop back. Good. We'll switch it up now. So as you inhale, come forward and up. As you exhale, put your hands inside your left foot, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, and then pivot on that back foot. So you're in this half squat, the Sanskrit name for it, or yoga name for it is Skandasana, which isn't really helpful because we don't speak Sanskrit, but <laughs> there you go. Stay on your fingertips, feel the length in the inside of your left thigh. And then pivot yourself back forward, frame your left foot, lift your chest up, find the lengthening through your right hip flexor, the front of your right thigh. And then as you exhale, take it back and open to Skandasana. 
Good. Follow your inhale back forward into a supported lunge. Good. And then this time, just pivot into your standing wide-legged forward fold facing the right side of your mat. Nice. Bring your hands back to frame your left foot. This time, instead of stepping your right foot forward, you're going to step your left foot back so that you're in a plank position. And we'll flow it out here so you can lower your knees down to the mat, lower all the way to your belly, or you can take chaturanga, lifting your chest either for cobra or upward dog, and then lifting your hips up and back for downward facing dog. Big breath in. Long breath out. Instead of flying away here, friend, stay with your breath. Love is patient. From your downward dog, lift your right knee up and then just curl your right knee into your nose. You'll draw your shoulders over your wrists. Two more times like this. Inhale, leg lifts up and back. Exhale, hug your knee into your nose, shoulders over wrists. And again, inhale, take it up and back. Exhale, drop forward, and then just put your right foot on the mat wherever it lands for warrior two. You'll pivot your back toes to face the long edge of your mat. And then once you're standing up, you can notice if your front ankle is under your front knee. We want to make a nice uh, eventual 90 degree angle there, but at least your front knee is stacked over your front ankle. Good. From your warrior two, tip it up and back to reverse your warrior. Straighten your right leg. And then as you exhale, tip forward for triangle. Right hand will find your shin. Maybe it finds the floor. Your left arm will reach up towards the ceiling. Good. Extend your left arm over your ear. Big breath into your left side body. And then lower your hand down to the mat. Bend back into your right knee. Step back into plank. And move through your vinyasa here. Again, could be chaturanga and up dog. Could be supported plank to your belly. Cobra and then downward dog. Or as always, you know you can skip that entirely and just meet us in down dog. From your downward dog, extend your left leg on your inhale. As you exhale, curl your knee into your chest, hover shoulders over wrists. Twice more, inhale, lift it up and back. Exhale, draw it forwards. And again, inhale, extend. Big, strong Ujjayi breath as you draw it forward, step your foot down, and find your way into warrior two. Hips open to the right side of your mat. Good. Reverse warrior on an inhale. Stay here. Straighten your left leg. And then as you exhale, tip yourself forward as you pivot into triangle. Left hand finds your shin. Right hand can reach up towards the ceiling. Your gaze can go to the floor straight out in front of you or up to your right hand. Good. Soft bend back into your left knee. Put both hands back on the floor. Step back to your plank. Move through your vinyasa and we'll meet again in downward dog. So good. Be patient with yourself. The Lord is patient with you. We're not in any rush here. We have one more flow, standing flow, before we take it down for our yin practice. So from your downward dog, make your way forward into a forward fold. Could be one big hop, could be a few steps, but you're hanging in a forward fold at the front of your mat. Press down to rise up, big breath in, arms overhead. Exhale, hands to your heart. Good, let's tip this into a warrior three. You're gonna lift your left leg up, and lift your left heel up towards the ceiling as your chest starts to hover over the floor in front of you. Maybe you make a T shape with your body, or maybe it's just a couple inches that you're pivoting forwards. Good. Now step your left foot all the way back for warrior two. Toes will face the long edge of your mat. Bend into your right knee, arms open wide. Like we did earlier, reverse your warrior, tip it up and back. This time, keep your front knee bent and just come forward into your side angle pose. Forearm can find your thigh or your right hand can find the floor. Good. Open your left arm up towards the ceiling. Feel the rotation of your right ribs under your left ribs. Good. And we'll come into triangle from here, this lower position. So you'll slowly straighten out your right leg, resting your right hand again on your shin, maybe your thigh, maybe the floor. 
So nice. Reach your left hand over your ear. Big inhale. Exhale, bend your right knee. Step forward, forward fold. Nice. Now stand all the way back up into your mountain pose, arms overhead. And exhale, hands to your chest. We'll find tree pose now. So root your left foot down and bring your right heel either to rest on your right ankle. Maybe you slide your right foot inside your right calf. Or maybe you draw it all the way up inside your right thigh. Rather than, um, than swaying all your weight over to the left, can you find the midline of your body? And as much as you're pressing your right foot into your left leg, can you feel an equal and opposite engagement of your left leg into your right foot? Nice. Good. Slowly release your right foot. Keep your right leg lifted and stretch it back behind you for warrior three. Again, could be a T-shaped warrior three, could be more of an angled warrior three. Stay with that deep ujjayi, victorious breath. Good. And then release your right foot to the floor for warrior two. Good. On your inhale, reverse. And as you exhale, come forward into your side angle. Big breath in here. As you exhale, straighten out your left leg for triangle. Inhale here. Right arm over your ear, and then as you exhale, bend your left knee, step your right foot forward, forward fold, back at the top. Again, root down as you rise all the way up on your inhale. As you exhale, hands and prayer at your heart. Right foot is your new tree trunk. Your left foot is your new branch. So draw either your left heel to your ankle or slide your foot a bit higher on your right leg. Feel the enduring patience, the slow, steady strength of a tree in this pose. Trees are in no rush. They're not busy. And yet their roots are deep. They withstand the storms. So nice, friend. Bring your left foot forward. Step it down and fold yourself all the way in half. We're going to do one more standing pose before we bring it down to the mat here. From your forward fold, begin to bend at your ankle, your knees, and your hips so that you're in chair pose. Hands will come just to your heart, though. Your body weight's going to be mostly in your heels, though the balls of your feet are anchoring you down. Your hips are reaching back behind you. Your chest is lifting up and forward. And we're just going to take one twist on either side here. So you can either open your arms out wide in a T-shape and take an open twist. So you'll revolve over to the right side. But instead of bringing your left hip with you, you're going to anchor your left hip where it is. You can also keep your hands in prayer at your heart and hook your outer right forearm outside of your right thigh. Outer left forearm, I'm sorry. Find the twist that works for you today. If you're pregnant, I'd recommend the open twist. Now, it can be harder to breathe deeply here when we're constricted. So really find your ujjayi. Let it anchor you here. After your next exhale, come back to the center. Stay in chair. Exhale, revolve to the left. Keep your right hip where it is. Knees should stay equal with each other, so your right knee is not sticking out in front of your left. You got it. One more inhale. And as you exhale, untwist, fold forward. That is the end of our heat building flow practice. What do you say we slow it down? Hands behind the mat. Step back to your plank. Lower all the way down onto your belly. And then when you're there, just stack your hands on top of each other. Make a little pillow for your forehead. Rest your forehead on the backs of your hands. And maybe just sway your hips slightly or your legs so that you can help your body release. Notice what your breath feels like in the front and back of your body. Notice your heart beating. John Ortberg says that for many of us, 
The great danger is not that we will renounce our faith. It is that we will become so distracted and rushed and preoccupied that we will settle for a mediocre version of it. We will all just skim our lives instead of actually living them. So friends, as we move through this slower practice, I'm going to invite us into this um, conversation with God about this season and the season to come. The first question that we're just going to hold in our hearts and ask the Lord to speak and reveal is this. What is it that you want to leave behind in this season? What is it from the season before we were quarantined and stuck at home? What is it about the way you lived your life, the habits you had, the choices you made, the schedule you kept that you want to stop doing? that you don't want to carry over into this new season whenever it is we can finally leave our homes and, and some kind of normalcy resumes. What is it you want to leave behind? From this, um, this position, let's slide our elbows underneath our shoulders, prop ourselves up so that we're in a supported back bend called Sphinx Pose. So your wrists and elbows will be on the same line and your elbows and shoulders are on the same line, but instead of collapsing between your shoulders so your shoulder blades come towards your ears, see if you can pull your shoulder blades away from your ears and down your back and feel the top of your head stretch higher towards the ceiling. Again, find your breath. Be patient with your body in this pose. Maybe even as a sign of offering and surrender, you turn your palms open as a willingness to offer up and let go. Anything that didn't serve you, serve God, serve your people, serve this world well, that you're willing to let go of. Good. And then if your palms are up, turn them back over. We'll press ourselves up and back into a child's pose. Let your knees be really wide here so your spine isn't rounding so much as lengthening. If your head has a hard time reaching the floor, you can stack your palms back up underneath it. We'll press ourselves up just a little bit. We'll thread the needle here so you'll reach your right arm up towards the ceiling. Maybe slide your knees back in a bit if they're super wide and then thread your right arm under your left so you'll be lying on the upper part of your right arm. Your head's going to rest on the floor still. You'll look over to the left side. And your left hand can stretch out long in front of you. Maybe it crawls over to the opposite corner of your mat. And see if you can kind of wiggle your hips back a little farther. So they're not dropping down towards your heels. They're still staying kind of lifted so that you've got some leverage to find a stretch here in the back of your chest. Good. And then slide your left hand under your shoulder, press yourself back up onto your hands and knees, and we'll just switch sides. So reach your left arm up now, inhale, and exhale, thread it underneath your right shoulder. Start to lie down so that your body weight is on the upper part of your left forearm, I'm sorry, your left upper arm. Your right fingertips can reach out long in front of you. I often find that using my breath here helps me make more space. So see if you can breathe into the space between your shoulder blades. Corey Ten Boom famously said, if the devil can't make us bad, he'll make us busy. <laughs> Is there a, a culture of busyness that you want to surrender and leave behind? 
a sense of hurry that goes against the very core nature of love. Because love is patient. It's not in a rush. Right hand comes under your shoulder. Press yourself back up onto your hands and your knees. And then come to sit down on your mat. Now is when we're going to start to use all of those pillows and that blanket that you grabbed earlier. So um, grab your blanket, fold it up a couple of times so that you can sit on it. And it gives you a, a little bit of extra height. And then make sure your two pillows are stacked on top of each other and within reach. We're going to come into a seated tree pose. So we'll start by bringing the sole of our right foot to the inside of your left thigh. You're sitting on your blanket, so just kind of scoot your sit bones underneath you a little bit more so that you have the sensation of kind of tipping forwards over the edge of your blanket rather than rounding back onto your tailbone. And then you'll bring your two pillows inside your left thigh. I even like to stack, like bring them right up to my belly so that as we deepen into this stretch, your whole torso will be supported by the, by the pillows. So sit up nice and tall, nice long spine, frame the pillows in your leg with your fingers, and then start to walk yourself forward. Now, you may find that you can only walk your hands forward a couple of inches and you feel the stretch and that's enough. Great. Maybe you don't use the pillows today. Maybe you just rest your hands or your elbows on the pillow and hold your head in your hands. Maybe you find that you could fold yourself a bit deeper and maybe even lay on your pillows. There's no better or worse here, but as the pillows can help you and be a support for you, let them be. Let your upper body soften in and stop working so hard. Let yourself receive the rest of this pose. Trust gravity to create space instead of any effort that you exert. See if you can soften the muscles in your face, relax your jaw, soften your shoulders. Good. Stay here for one more breath in. And release it all with a breath out. Slowly press yourself back upright. Keep your pillows nearby, but scooch them off your mat for a moment. We're going to cross our right ankle over our left thigh. Make sure your left leg is in line with your hip. Fingertips will come behind you to keep you stable and then start to bend your left knee. Your left foot will slide onto the floor. And for some of us, this may be where we stay today. Maybe it's a soft bend in our left knee. Maybe you get a really deep bend. What I want you to notice is whether you're rounding back onto your sacrum or tailbone and really resist that. Prop yourself up on your sit bones, which is why we're sitting on these blankets here. Now, if you're like, I this, I don't feel a whole lot, I could stretch deeper, what you'll do is start to lower your left shin down onto the floor and stack your shins on top of each other like they were two fire logs. And again, really scooch your sit bones underneath you here. Feel that tipping forward through your pelvis. And now, if you have your legs stacked, you've got a couple options with the, with the pillows. If your legs are comfortably stacked, you can bring both pillows onto your lap. Again, scooch them all the way to your belly and just fold yourself forward so that you are nice and supported in your upper body. If your knee isn't quite reaching your ankle and your shins are kind of sort of stacked, then don't push them with the pillows. Um, just stay where you are. Maybe walk your fingertips forward a bit and breathe. Notice that temptation inside of you that says, if only I could fly away from all of this. The longing within us that says, if only then. When God says, I am all you need. I am here. I am present. I am patient. He sits with us in the midst of our overwhelm. Good. 
And slowly make your way out of this pose. Bring both feet onto the floor with your knees bent and just sway your knees side to side. Good, and then we'll do these two stretches on the other side. So sitting on your blanket, still extend your right leg, bring your left foot inside your right thigh like you were doing tree. And then with that long spine of yours, start to fold yourself forward. If you want to grab your pillows and slide them up into your belly so you can lie on them, do that. Wherever you are, you can still consciously relax the parts of your body that are tensing up. Now I said I'd re revisit Psalm 55 because the first part of the psalm that I read to you feels quite familiar to us, right? The sense of, of being preoccupied, of um, being surrounded, of being in fear and dread this desire to run away from it all. And then David spends another like 15 verses uh, bemoaning his situation, how dark and dire it is, how hopeless he feels. But then we get to the end of this psalm. And it says this in verse 22. Here's what I've learned through it all. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord, and measureless grace will strengthen you. He will watch over his lovers, never letting them slip or be overthrown. Even after sitting in so much darkness, living in so much fear, Crying out to God for rescue, David lands at this place where he says, here's what I've learned through it though. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord and measureless grace will strengthen you. Not your effort, not your great strategies, not your perfect predictions of the future. No, no. measureless grace will strengthen you. Slowly come back upright, and we'll just slide our left ankle over our right thigh. Start to bring your right foot to the floor, bending your right knee, and find your outer hip stretch on this side. Maybe it's staying here with your knees bent and your chest puffing up towards your shin. Maybe you lower your right shin down to the floor, and you stack your ankles and your knees on top of each other. Maybe you grab your pillows, give your chest something to relax onto. And friend, what is it that God has revealed to you in this season? What is it that God has restored or spoken to you? What behaviors or practices or ways of living do you want to carry with you into the next season? What is it could you sum up and say, but here's what I've learned through it all? What shape will that take when all this starts to fade away? Nice, big breath in, big breath out, and then gently press yourself back upright, bring both feet onto the floor, and sway your knees from side to side. And bring your pillow stack over to the right side of your mat, kind of about halfway down. We're going to lie down on our backs. And then hug your knees into your chest. Good. And um, let's just roll over onto your left side. So you're just going to lie on the left side of your body. Straighten your left leg so it's on your mat. And you're going to keep your right knee bent and just rest it 
on the pillows that you've created. So your knee, your shin, your ankle should all be nice and supported by your blankets. Now we're not, we're gonna make this a twist. Clearly we're not quite twisting yet. So what you're gonna do is press the back of your head into the floor just gently, enough so that you can kind of lift your shoulders up and then shimmy your right shoulder a bit closer to the floor so your chest is pointing more towards the ceiling and you're able to find this twist through the middle of your spine. You can open your arms out kind of like a T. You can even look over to see your right hand. And we'll just stay and breathe here for a few breaths. We began this video, this quote from Dallas Willard, who said that hurry is the great enemy of spiritual life in our day. You must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. What would it look like to take some of the boredom and the slowness and the quiet of this season into the next? What would your relationship with God look like? What would your relationship with your family and your friends look like? What would your health, your mental health, your physical health, your stress levels look like? Take one more breath in and one big breath out. Good, and then slowly lie back onto your spine, hug your knees into your chest, and then put your feet on the floor just for a moment so you can carry your pillows over to the right side of your mat. We'll lie on our right side, straighten your right leg, rest your left shin on those pillows. And then again, subtle pressure in the back of your head to just sort of shimmy your left shoulder a bit closer to the floor, your right lung more underneath you so that you can find the twist here. Stay here and breathe. Receive the measureless grace that sustains you. One more really nice big breath in here. And out. Slowly lie back down onto your spine. Hug your knees into your chest. Maybe sway side to side. And we'll set up for Shavasana. It's gonna be a super luxurious Shavasana because we have these pillows here. So you can stack one pillow under your knees or two pillows under your knees. That's my favorite. You can also put one pillow uh, vertically on your mat and lie down on it so that it supports your whole spine and your arms kind of hang off to the side and your chest gets this nice opening. Find what would be most supportive for you and then settle in. I'm going to close this practice by reading a poem to you called Lockdown. You may have seen it. It's been, it's been circulating on Facebook, but it's by a um, Capuchin Franciscan named Brother Richard Hendrick, who lives in Ireland. I'll read it to us and then leave uh, uh, some space for silence, and then this practice will end. So linger here, friends, as long as you desire. He says, yes, there's fear. Yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. But 
They say that in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, you can hear the birds again. They say that after just a few weeks of quiet, the sky is no longer thick with fumes, but blue and gray and clear. They say that in the streets of Assisi, people are singing to each other across the empty squares, keeping their windows open so that those who are alone may hear the sounds of family around them. They say that a hotel in the west of Ireland is offering free meals and delivery to the housebound. Today, a young woman I know is busy spreading flyers with her number through the neighborhood so that the elders may have someone to call on. Today, churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples are preparing to welcome and shelter the homeless, the sick, the weary. All over the world, people are slowing down and reflecting. All over the world, people are looking at their neighbors in a new way. All over the world, people are waking up to a new reality, to how big we really are, to how little control we really have, to what really matters, to love. So we pray and we remember that yes, there is fear, but there does not have to be hate. Yes, there is isolation, but there does not have to be loneliness. Yes, there is panic buying, but there does not have to be meanness. Yes, there is sickness, but there does not have to be disease of the soul. Yes, there is even death, but there can always be a rebirth of love. Wake to the choices you make as to how to live now. Today, breathe. Listen. Behind the factory noises of your panic, the birds are singing again. The sky is clearing. Spring is coming. And we are always encompassed by love. Open the windows of your soul, and though you may not be able to touch across the empty square, sing. Friend, I hope that practice was such a blessing to you, that you feel more connected to God in and around you, that you have a sense of God's peace dwelling within you. And if you enjoyed this practice, you want more like it, you're interested in exploring some meditation and connecting with a global community of women and men who love Jesus and yoga, then come join me in the Abbey. It's where I spend most of my time now. The Abbey is an online yoga sanctuary. And in this season, we're studying the cross, the upper room, this journey through suffering on the way to redemption. And we're asking questions like, can suffering be redeemed? Where is God in the midst of our doubt? Can God really be present in the midst of our fear? So we're walking through those themes with yoga videos and meditation resources. And just like I said, a really beautiful community. Come and join us, theyogaabbey.com, and I'll see you back here on your mat again soon.